Twitter's new owner, Elon Musk, says that no major decisions will be made for the time being on reinstating suspended accounts. Musk had previously signaled that he was willing to reverse bans on controversial users, including the former U.S. President Donald Trump. With Twitter now in the hands of the world's richest person, following months of legal drama that sowed doubt over whether Elon Musk would own the company at all, analysts say now the real hard work begins. This is going to be very difficult. Culturally, Musk and Twitter, exact opposites. And I think it's going to take time here. He's going to fire a lot of people. And I don't expect uh, champagne dinners anytime soon at uh, Twitter headquarters. A lot of tough work to be done first, and that's going to be one of his challenges. Musk has already swung the axe, purging the company's CEO, CFO, and its legal affairs and policy chief. Current and former employees said they expect members of Twitter's trust and security team, which includes content moderators, to be among Musk's deepest job cuts. The self-described free speech absolutist has said he wants to prevent Twitter from becoming an echo chamber for hate and division. On Friday, rapper Kanye West's Twitter profile, which was suspended for posting anti-Semitic remarks, was back on the platform. Musk said it was restored before he acquired Twitter. He's also said he would reinstate former U.S. President Donald Trump's account. On Friday, Trump said he was happy Twitter was in sane hands, but he did not say whether he would return to his account. Besides shaping what he called the common digital town square, Musk has also said he wants to turn Twitter into a so-called super app that offers everything from money transfers to shopping and ride hailing. He's going to have to increase engagement. Clearly, headcount cuts will be on the horizon. And then the journey to creating a WeChat-like app that we see in China that's really, I think, the ultimate strategic goal for Musk when it comes to Twitter. According to a source, Musk has told investors he also plans to sell premium Twitter subscriptions to reduce reliance on ads, allow content creators to make money, and enable payments. All right, for some analysis, we're now joined in studio by Spumalele Zondi, producer and presenter of SABC's Tech Show Network. Thanks so much for joining us, Spumalele. This buy, not buying, buying saga has been going on for quite a while now. But in the end, it looks as if um, the, uh, Elon Musk's hand was forced, wasn't it? Well, that's it. Um, it didn't really buy it, so is it because mm -hmm. he had been taken to that court in Delaware and uh, mm -hmm. in all likeliness, because the decision was also made the day before the case was supposed to go to court um, or the day before the deadline, which was the 28th of, um, of October. Um, and, and as you know, that initially he wanted to buy it. Um, he owned 9% of the shares initially. He said he's buying it and then he, he backtracked on that. Um, and his reason that he gave for backtracking is that um, Twitter was not being forthcoming on how many daily active users they had and how many bots were on the platform. Um, and now bots would uh, basically what some might call fake accounts. So Peter sets up a couple of accounts and they tweet more or less the same thing. They retweet each other and they get a particular conversation going. But you're not really influencing people. It's not really real people's views. It's views of one person who set up a machine um, to tweet the same thing over and over and over again. He said that was his reason for uh, the backtracking. But he probably also has had realized that maybe it didn't really have any more have that as much influence as um, he thought it, it, it had initially. And then there was that scenario then when he was being taken to court. And he seemed to have been uh, playing around with things a little bit because even his tweets, uh, he, was t he was tweeting a lot of jokes um, about it. And then all of a sudden an about turn happens and it happens the day before the court case. So... Uh, if we take into consideration the numbers, uh, 346 million uh, users worldwide, but of those, we don't know how many are active, and we know that very few actually generate most of the traffic. With that in mind, 
and you're looking at it commercially, is it worth $44 billion? Well, it had been, uh, because it was a shock in the beginning that uh, he would have offered to buy it for that much mm. to begin with, right? Um, and then there's also the issue of the fact that share prices had already started uh, tumbling. Um, and I, I believe that the uh, share price was lower than what he bought it for, when he bought uh, when he bought the platform so is it really worth it and also if he is to allow the kind of free speech he said he wants to allow because he wants to bring back people who've been removed for uh, what may be considered hate speech or anti-semitic views and and the like and if he's to allow that 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 might also chase away advertisers as well and those are the people he needs to keep because you're talking about the number of active users so advertisers need to know how many people you influence so those are the active viewers, I mean active users rather, that you need to be having these conversations. So they also know that, okay, so these many eyes are looking at our adverts every single day. But then again, if you then are permitting views that um, are not seen to have any kind of goodwill, um, and would anyone want to be associated with the platform? Maybe that's also why he's now said that um, no serious decision will be taken when he initially said that um, there are people who are we're going to be allowed back on. He's fired the top executives, including yeah. the woman who suspended Donald Trump. Was that more revenge for what he perceived as being misinformed or what do you think's going on? Well, what he's said is that they hadn't given him um, the right. They were not honest. They were mm. dishonest. Um, and, and, and he can do this now as the only person who owns the platform. He doesn't have to report to a group of people. Um, and he says it's because they didn't give him the, the right information that he needed um, before he or when he made the decision to buy Twitter. So basically, I guess he feels he didn't um, buy it in in goodwill or in trust he was misled to uh, to buying it i suppose with technology you have to anticipate the future a future that's changing rapidly all the time um people with gray hair like me love facebook but my daughter won't be seen dead on facebook anymore and the world is getting younger and younger yeah so is this a bet against a trend so already 10 years ago, right, mm. um, if a research that had been done in the United Kingdom, it was already evident then that the people who were on Twitter were women over the age of 40. Mm. So that's 10 years ago. Um, and so 10 years later, those people are over the age of 50. Um, and we already know, and there's, there are many reports on this, a lot of research has been done on this, that um, the current trend is that things are moving towards video platforms. Um, Gen Z is mostly on TikTok and not on, um, on Twitter. Um, and Gen Z being uh, what South Africans would call Amatsu 2000. Um, and so if the future is video, Video, um, and Twitter is still getting us to tweet 280 characters and people don't really like tweeting responses anymore whereas TikTok has figured out ways of how you can even record a video as your response to a previous post that had been shared by somebody else so uh, maybe they're gonna start th thinking about those solutions as well on Twitter um, and, and, and see how they can incorporate video a bit more how they can become a video platform as opposed to um, the platform of, um, of words and uh, characters uh, that it is now. I mean, Twitter, when we look at all the social platforms, it's got a, a reputation now about being the most toxic and the most, you know, uh, really sort of... And I just wonder if a platform like that can attract advertising at all? I mean, how do you change the culture there? So it is social media because there have also been complaints that um, that trend, because Twitter started um, as a platform where people could have 
um, nice conversations, friendly conversations, then became a platform where um, a political platform. Um, we know that, for example, Barack Obama was said to have been the first person who was elected to be a, a leader of a country through his use of Twitter as a campaign tool. Uh, what followed was the Arab Spring um, around the year 2011. Um, governments fell in North Africa and the Middle East. And then the toxicity came in as more people came to the platform. Um, and it's been said that that trend is seen to be moving to other platforms um, as well. And I suppose it's guidelines and how you can then control that toxicity uh, within whichever platform um, that you, um, you are managing. Um, and maybe Twitter, because towards the end, um, they were getting a lot of flack for allowing a lot of um, a lot of uh, views that um, it, I would say the majority of users had felt should not have been allowed. And then they started cleaning house after that. So now when they were coming up with methods of cleaning house, you then have a buyer who says, well, we're not going to clean house as much as we uh, as was being done towards the last two to three years. Um, and so that's where the problem might be then in terms of attracting um, investors. And maybe also what would create the change that probably is needed is who is going to run Twitter because he's now uh, fired the top executives. Um, it, I don't think he's going to be running it himself. So he then needs executives that are going to run the platform. Obviously, they're going to have to report to him um, as the sole shareholder. Um, and um, so that's what's going to determine what the future is going to be. He hasn't released very much. He's released very little mm. on what his plan is with the platform. Oh. All right, million dollar question. Will Donald Trump be back on Twitter soon? Um, we thought he would be, but today we're finding out that there's an uh, about turn on that as well, right? Mm. So in all likelihood, at some point, he might be allowed, but there might be caution on what he can and, and, and not say on the platform. All right, so 44 billion, that's a huge uh, gamble. Um, one would think that there needs to be a real fundamental shift in Twitter and Twitter culture for it to have a future. Yeah, for it to grow as well, because of 44 billion, we do know that in the beginning, he said he was going to be raising the money. Um, we don't know how he raised the money. Um, and obviously, he will have to report back to those that gave him the money. Um, and they will also want that growth to happen. And I do suspect that um, what's been seen on platforms like Instagram, for example, YouTube has also been trying to rebrand in the short short format videos following um, the popularity of TikTok in the last few years. I do believe that uh, Twitter is going to introduce video more and more and it's going to um, have video as one of its methods um, that uh, it's going to be promoting as opposed to video being um, something you tweet below the words or a video not being the prim a primary method you share your message on TikTok. I do think that there's going to have to be a shift for the growth to happen. Spumulele, always good talking to you. Thanks so much indeed for your insights on this world of tech. And thanks very much, Peter. All right, and uh, that was Spumulele Zonda speaking to us about uh, uh, Twitter. Elon Musk, uh, yeah, with a South African connection, has bought it for $44 billion. We'll have to wait and see what the next chapter of this story is going to look like.